Welcome to U.S. Football Forum, where football is king. Are you sure about that? Yes, we are sure, Mr. John Cena. Thank you. I'm really excited today, guys, because this marks the third installment of our series that we're calling Who Is? If you're new to the channel, don't worry, I got you covered. Who Is is a series where we take a look at XFL rising stars and see how they got to the XFL. What did their journey look like? So sit back, relax, or grab you some snacks, maybe some popcorn or something, and get ready because today we're talking about Mr. Excitement himself, Martez Carter. Martez Carter, also known as Mr. Excitement, seems to be flipping his way into our hearts as we tune into what is looking like a phenomenal first season of the 2020 XFL. The XFL Los Angeles Wildcats running back has been making subtle waves during this XFL offseason, showing off some great tumbling skills. One social media highlight even shows this man performing a standing backflip and in the process catches a football and then completes the backflip. Phenomenal. While Martez is an exciting player to watch, I know most of us still want to know where Martez Carter came from. How did he get to the XFL? And an even better question, who is Martez Carter? I have a 27 year old brother who's incarcerated. My mother dropped out of school in 10th grade. My father dropped out of school in 10th grade. And I have older brothers who dropped out in the 10th grade. I didn't want to be a bad product of my environment. I didn't want to be a statistic. So I just really put in my mind that if I had gotten a chance to go to college, I was going to make the best of it. This quote was given by Martez Carter during an interview with Maya A. Jones of The Undefeated. Seeing this quote makes me think a lot about life, where some of us are dealt bad hands. It's just the way it is. That's life. But how can we take those negative circumstances and pivot them into positive situations? Granted, Martez could have easily taken this situation and followed the path of his parents or siblings. Incarceration or dropping out of school would have easily been a write-off for failing. Instead, like many other great stories we read about in the athletic space, people like Martez take this adversity and flip it into a positive opportunity. Mind you, there will be a lot of flipping themes going on. Martez would not only face adversity in his environment, but he would also face it within his athletic career and have an opportunity to make one of the most significant changes for his athletic future. Martez grew up in Monroe, Louisiana, about 300 miles north of New Orleans. He attended Richwood High School where he played, you guessed it, basketball. Well, basketball, what the heck? Yeah, basketball. <laughs> yes, Martez played basketball. He was a basketball player at heart and wasn't even giving football a serious look. Now, one thing you should know is that Martez is 5'9" which means he was definitely playing point guard and was probably breaking ankles with how shifty he is. Apparently, Martez didn't start playing football seriously until he got to college. And even then, Martez started his college career playing basketball on scholarship at Wiley College. After a year of attending Wiley College, Martez's scholarship would be voided after his coach transferred schools. This is where Martez's story takes an awesome turn. With the only option but to return back to his hometown of Monroe, Louisiana, Martez will be given an opportunity of life-changing circumstances. Grambling State University, a highly regarded historically black college about 35 minutes from Martez's hometown, would be the next destination, but not to play basketball. Head coach Broderick Five spotted Martez playing basketball and would offer Martez an opportunity to walk on to Grambling's football team. Martez would start off playing defensive back, but truly excelled at special teams. During his first season in 2014, Martez would have 32 kick returns for 770 yards and one touchdown. His 2015 season would allow him to continue his dominance special teams wise, but he would also become a featured running back. Martez would have 24 kick returns for 616 yards, but shine in his running back role, quickly making a name for himself with 111 rushing attempts for 876 yards and nine touchdowns. He would go on to have two additional great years as a running back slash returner, ending his collegiate career with 396 career rushing attempts for 2,628 yards and 29 rushing touchdowns. He also showed off his receiving talent with a career 74 receptions for 961 yards and nine receiving touchdowns. This man was truly a star within the SWAT conference, and throughout his collegiate career, he was dubbed the nickname Mr. Excitement. Martez would go on to participate in the NFL PA Collegiate Bowl, which gave Martez one more shot to show what he could offer an NFL backfield. He didn't disappoint. 
He ended the day with 53 rushing yards, 24 yards receiving, and 69 total kick return yards. Not a bad showing for a collegiate bowl where everybody's trying to eat. He caught the eye of one specific organization, but we'll get to that in just a second. Wrapping up his senior year, it was seen that he was looked at as an underrated prospect. Coming from a smaller NCAA Division I program, it was going to be tough to wow NFL scouts. Some of the intangibles that stood out for most scouts would be his stout frame and great vision. He was a patient back who was versatile and explosive enough to score on any and every attempt he had at touching the ball. The only downside was that he was significantly undersized. In an NFL league where they weren't going for a bowling ball quick and scatty back, there wasn't a market for Martez. Martez did not receive an invite to the NFL Combine, but he did have a pretty stellar pro day. Enough attention to garner some NFL pro scouts. They continued to compare him to Chicago's running back Tariq Cohen, and at this point, Martez had done all he could do to attempt to find a spot on an NFL roster. The weekend of April 26, 2018 rolls around and marks the start of the 2018 NFL Draft. Martez is hoping to get a call. The first round comes around, no call. Second and third round come around, no call. Fourth, fifth, and sixth pass, no call. Surely Martez will get a call in the seventh round, right? None, no calls. 30 minutes after the last and final pick of the seventh round, Martez's phone rings. Who else is on the other end of the phone but Super Bowl 22 MVP Redskins quarterback and Grambling alumni, Doug Williams? Fun fact, real quick. Doug Williams actually coached at Richwood High School while Martez was playing basketball. What are the chances? At the time, Doug Williams was serving as VP of player personnel for the Redskins and offered Martez an undrafted free agent deal. Martez was going to tell ESPN's undefeated. My motto is, I just need a shot. Insert corny basketball reference real quick. Well, this shot must be Steph Curry's step back three from half court because it's a once in a lifetime chance. Boom! Oh, y'all don't like that? I don't care, man. Boo, y'all. Boo, y'all. Unfortunately, Martez wouldn't even get a chance to smell the field for the Redskins. He was later acquired by the New Orleans Saints during that same 2018 season, where he was basically on and off the practice squad for the Saints. So like most players that I imagine got pigeonholed into an NFL practice squad, the XFL looked really appealing. It definitely struck an interest for Martez as he threw his hat in the ring to give it a shot. Never gets old. Martez was drafted to the Los Angeles Wildcats as the eighth pick of the seventh round. The number 56 overall pick has been making waves as a player to watch out for. Week three of the XFL would be his first outing, putting up some solid numbers and flipping all over the place. Martez would end the week three performance with 34 yards rushing with two touchdowns and 41 yards receiving with one touchdown reception. Martez is really proving to be a versatile back the same way he was in college showing that he can receive the ball just as well as he can run the ball. Although the journey for Martez has been a winding one as he's made his way to the XFL, I think that he can really make a permanent home within the XFL. Like I said before, the NFL isn't looking for these scat back, bowling ball type running backs, but maybe he can create his own niche within the XFL. Only time will tell. But I think I speak for everyone when I say, I can't wait to tune in every weekend to see what Mr. Excitement will do next. So what do you guys think of the third installment of the Who Is series? Mr. Excitement is definitely a player to look out for in the XFL. If you agree, leave your comments below. If you enjoyed the content, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. This is US Football Forum, where football is king. I'll see you all in the next video. God bless.